Namaskaram. Welcome back to the second lecture on sample variance. Our first lecture was the inductive approach and this one is mathematical. In the previous lecture, we have defined sample variance S square as 1 by n minus 1 sigma xi minus x bar whole square because of these two good reasons. In this lecture, I am trying to establish this is a good estimate of sigma square. That is, S square is an unbiased estimate of sigma square. In this lecture, I will settle all the promises made in the previous lecture. First, we will prove this inequality used in the previous lecture for establishing the first observation. For this, first we have to prove that minimum of this function is at x bar. So, we are going to find the critical points of this function by considering f dash of a equal to 0. That is 2 times sigma xi minus a into minus 1 equal to 0. The derivative is with respect to a that is sigma xi minus a equal to 0. By expanding the sigma, we get sigma xi minus sigma a, sigma a become na that is equal to 0. By solving this equation, we get a equal to sigma xi by n. This is nothing x bar. So, this function has only one critical point at x bar. Next, we have to check whether it is a minimum point or maximum point. For that, we consider the second derivative. So, f double dash of a equal to 2 times sigma minus 1 into minus 1. That is equal to 2 times sigma 1. Sigma 1 become n. So, this is 2n. It is clear that 2n is always positive, whatever be the value of a. So, in particular, f double dash of x bar is positive. Therefore, by second derivative test, f of a has a local minimum at x bar and this function has no other critical points. So, it is a global minimum point that is f of x bar is less than or equal to f of a for all a. Next, we consider s n square. By definition, s n square equal to 1 by n sigma i c equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square. So, this is f of x bar. f of x bar is less than or equal to f of a for all a. Therefore, which is less than or equal to 1 by n sigma i c equal to 1 to n x i minus mu whole square. This is f of mu. This is equal to s mu square. So, s n square is less than or equal to s mu square. It is clear that s n square equal to s mu square only when mu equal to x bar because this function has only one global minimum. Next, we are going to verify points 2 and 3 by examples. I am going to illustrate these examples using a Python program. The link of this Jupyter notebook is provided in the description box. Ok, let's start the code. So, this is our population saved in the variable popu. Next, we calculate population mean and saved in the variable p underscore mean. Similarly, we saved the population variance in the variable p underscore var. By executing this code, we get population mean as 10 and population variance as 41.5. Next, we are going to verify average of all sample means of size n equal to mu. In this example, m equal to 4, n equal to 3, and mu equal to 10. Population mean is 10. If you run this code, then we get these are the all samples of size 3. It contains m raised to n that is equal to 4 raised to 3 that is equal to 64. This column contains corresponding sample means. Next, we have to find average of this sample means. By running this code, we get the average of this sample means as 10. This is nothing but our population mean. That is 1 by 64 sigma x bar. Here, summation runs over all the sample means of size 3. This is equal to 10. So, this is our population mean. So, in general, 1 by m raised to n summation x bar equal to mu. Here, this summation runs over all the samples of size n. You can verify this result by simple combinatorial techniques for a finite population. The averaging is done by expectation. So, in general, this means expectation of x bar equal to mu. Next, we are going to verify that average of all sample variances of size n is equal to sigma square. This data frame contains three columns. The first one is set of all possible subsets. It contains 64 subsets. This column contains sample variances obtained by dividing with n. 
next column is obtained by dividing using n minus 1. So both are sampled variances. Next we have to find average of these sampled variances. So the average of the second column is 27.66 and average of third column is 41.5. This is our population variance sigma square. Our population variance is 41.5. That is 1 by 64 sigma sn square equal to 27.66 etc. 7 and 1 by 64 sigma s square equal to 41.5. This is nothing but our population variance. So similar to sample mean in general this means expectation of s square equal to sigma square. You can also verify this result 1 by m raised to n sigma s square equal to sigma square for a finite population. Here the summation runs over all samples of size n. You can play with this code by changing population and sample size n. Next we will see the generalization of these two concepts. That is expectation of x bar equal to mu and expectation of s square equal to sigma square. Suppose x1, x2, etc, xn be an independent sample of size n from a population with mean mu and variance sigma square. So we can treat xi's are independent random variables. Expectation of xi equal to mu for all i and variance of xi equal to sigma square for all i. Next we consider expectation of x bar. By definition x bar equal to 1 by n sigma is equal to 1 to n xi. And we know that expectation of ax equal to a into expectation of x. So this become 1 by n expectation of sigma xi. And this is equal to 1 by n sigma expectation of xi. And this is equal to 1 by n sigma mu because expectation of xi equal to mu for every i. And this summation over i and this mu is constant with respect to i. So this become n mu. So 1 by n n mu that is equal to mu. So expectation of x bar equal to mu. This means x bar is an unbiased estimate of mu. So x bar is a good estimate of mu. Next we consider variance of x bar. By definition x bar equal to 1 by n sigma is equal to 1 to n xi. And variance has this property variance of ax equal to a square into variance of x. So this become 1 by n square into variance of sigma xi. Then this is equal to 1 by n square sigma variance of xi. And this is equal to 1 by n square sigma sigma square. And this sigma runs over i. So this become n sigma square. So this is sigma square by n. We know that variance of a random variable x is equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square. So in the case of x bar, variance of x bar equal to expectation of x bar square minus expectation of x bar whole square. Variance of x bar is sigma square by n. So LHS becomes sigma square by n that is equal to expectation of x bar square minus this is our mu. Expectation of x bar is mu. So this is mu square. So expectation of x bar is equal to sigma square by n plus mu square. Next we consider variance of xi. By definition variance of xi equal to expectation of xi square minus expectation of xi whole square. And we know that this is sigma square. So sigma square equal to expectation of xi square minus this is mu square. So expectation of xi square equal to sigma square plus mu square. We will use these two equations for establishing expectation of s square equal to sigma square. Next we consider expectation of s square. By definition, s square equal to 1 by n minus 1 sigma xi minus x bar whole square. This is equal to 1 by n minus 1 expectation of sigma xi minus x bar whole square. Next we consider this portion that is equal to by expanding this bracket we get xi square minus 2 xi x bar plus x bar square. By expanding sigma we get sigma xi square minus sigma 2 xi x bar plus sigma x bar square. Here sigma runs over i so 2 x bar is constant so we can take out z. So this become sigma xi square minus 2 x bar sigma xi plus here sigma is with respect to i so this is n x bar square and we know that x bar equal to 1 by n sigma xi so this term become n x bar. So this become so expectation of sigma xi minus x bar all square equal to expectation of sigma xi square minus n x bar square and expectation is linear. So this become sigma expectation of xi minus expectation of n x bar square and we know that expectation of xi square equal to sigma square plus mu square. So this become sigma sigma square plus mu square minus then n into sigma 
x bar square and also we know that expectation of x bar square equal to sigma square by n plus mu square so this become because again this is a summation with respect to i so we can treat this as a constant so n times sigma square plus mu square by expanding this bracket we get so this is n mu sigma this is minus n mu sigma square this become n minus 1 sigma square so expectation of a score equal to 1 by n minus 1 expectation of this and now this become 1 by n minus 1 n minus 1 into sigma square so this become sigma square so expectation of s square equal to sigma square therefore s square equal to 1 by n minus 1 sigma is equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square is an unbiased estimate of sigma square so this formula gives an idea on how to approximate population variance you can take as many possible samples of same size then take the average of all sample variances and this approximation is better when number of samples are large irrespective of sample size if we are capable of finding population parameters very accurately from samples then we can solve some of the very interesting real world problems completely unfortunately now we are not capable so the machine suffer for us gan means generative adversarial network it is a deep learning based probability model the essence of gan is that machine tries to generate samples from a probability model for doing this machine needs to know what are the population parameters or parameters of the distribution this is the one of the importance of parameter estimation thank you